Hello everyone and welcome to our discussion of the conformational analysis of alkanes. This is out of chapter 4 in Klein. Um, we're going to use Newman projections for this, so hopefully you have read or looked at our supplemental video on Newman projections or read about it in the book and you've got it. Um, so we're going to discuss conformations of molecules, the strain associated with different conformations, and the energetic penalties required for interconverting between conformations. So it's important to recognize that rotation about a single bond is what provides different conformers of a molecule. Uh, this is different than constitutional isomers of molecule which change bonding. Um, so we're going to jump right in and look at conformational analysis of a very simple molecule, ethane. So let's start with ethane. Okay, so uh, in general, we draw ethane in a staggered form. Again, if you're not familiar with that term, please go view the conformational or the Newman projection video. Um, but here is the staggered conformation of ethane. Um, this, and we're going to specifically highlight two of the hydrogens, one on the front carbon and one on the back, just to indicate where they are as we rotate them around um, the carbon-carbon bond. So I'll highlight that one and this one in the back. These two hydrogens are anti to each other uh, as drawn, so we'll see how they go. So if we rotate, let's say by 60 degrees, we get a Newman projection that leads to an eclipse conformation of all of the hydrogens. Right, and then if we rotate by, and we can say, we'll leave this one on the front here, we'll say we rotated this one over. Uh, if we rotate this again by another 60 degrees, we come back to another staggered confirmation. So you notice that we're rotating uh, in a clockwise direction with the back carbon being, or the back carbon being rotated. Okay, so these different forms are considered rotomers, and we're going to talk about the energetics of these forms. Now clearly, hopefully, hopefully you can see that this and this are identical in terms of their atomic positioning, so these are degenerate states and therefore well, they will have the same energy. Uh, the interesting one, and the reason that we draw this one, uh, we'll talk about in a minute, is this one, because this is the state which this molecule has to pass through to get from A to C. Right? So this state B is um, the state in which it has to pass through to get from A to C. All right, so the energy required to move two hydrogens past each other, which is shown in our eclipse confirmation in B, uh, is the barrier to rotation. Uh, there's a really nice video that I'll put in the comment section um, on YouTube that shows a molecular dynamic simulation of ethane uh, rotating and what the effects of the energetic penalty for uh, the barrier to rotation have on the lifetime of the different states. So check that out if you want to just see a really quick, cool clip of ethane rotating. Um, all right, so let's talk about the energetic penalties um, in terms of a potential energy diagram. So if we were to draw out a potential energy surface, 
or diagram for this. We'll label our axes because we're good scientists. Uh, and For now, we'll do this in kilojoules per mole. Um, let's look at our different states. So we have A, and for now, we're just going to put A at some arbitrary point uh, because the other states will be relative to A. Right, so going from A, we're going to go to B. So B is going to be a higher energy state. Uh, the hydrogens are all eclipsing. So B will be higher energy, and C will be the same energy as A. Right, so the difference in energy here. from A to B is roughly 12 kilojoules per mole. All right, so that is considered a torsional strain. Uh, if you like to consider each of these sets of interactions, so each hydrogen-hydrogen interaction, um, it's their own, you could divide this by three and say that that's roughly four kilojoules per mole per interaction. Um, so what this really means is that this state here, the eclipse state B, is very short-lived. Uh, so this is a short-lived state. And we'll come back to these terms later, but this is also considered a transition state. Right? So it exists for very, very short periods of time, roughly the bond, bond vibration. Um, but we'll come back to that when we get into potential energy surfaces with regards to reaction mechanisms in more detail. Um, so this is a fairly low barrier, and we'll put up a supplementary video that talks about energies and what they represent uh, in a few days, so just keep an eye out for that. But for now, this is a, a fairly low barrier, um, which means that there is essentially free rotation about the CC bond of ethane. Um, now the other question you should be asking, because you're all good scientists, is why? Why is there an energetic penalty for going from the staggered to the eclipse state? Uh, well, that, among most scientists uh, or chemists, is thought to be the result of a loss of hyperconjugation. And I'll get into this term in a little while. We're going to come back to this when we start talking about carbocation stability. Um, I'll put together a supplementary, supplementary video for this as well. But for right now, we'll just throw that term out there, and I promise we'll come back to it. Uh, all right. So that's kind of the confirmations of ethane. There's one transition state that leads between two degenerate states of ethane where the lowest energy state is the staggered conformation of A and C. Okay, so the next one we're going to talk about is butane. Alright, so butane. Um, Butane becomes a little more complicated because we have two methyl substituents 
on our ethane, if we want to think about it this way. So if we look at it, this is our the CC bond of interest right here. There are two methyl groups on each of those carbons, or one methyl group on each of those carbons. So there are more than one staggered and eclipse conformations, so we have to go through and actually draw the different conformations out. Um, we'll do this in a Newman projection. So looking down, and it doesn't really matter which way you look down this bond, uh, it's a symmetrical molecule. That's nice about you too. All right. So we'll start with the two methyl groups antiperiplanar to one another. Now, hopefully you're familiar with that term. If not, please go watch the rest of the Newman projection video. All right, uh, so if we rotate this by 60 degrees, we get to An eclipse state. If we rotate that again by 60 degrees, we'll come to another staggered state shown here. And if we come another 60 degrees, we'll end up in another eclipse state where both of our methyl groups are eclipsing one another. Okay, so you can see that if we continue going around, if we rotate by another, we're going to head back to essentially a degenerate state of this structure, just with the methyl group on the other side, and we'll continue all the way back to another ante as we continue around the ring. So these are the four states that we have to consider. Right? So we'll start with A, our ante state. Uh, B is going to be a transition state between A and C, and D is going to be a transition state between C and the degenerate state of C. All right, so if we draw these out on a potential energy diagram, we can see that, so let's draw this out. We can't see anything until we draw it out. All right, well, let's think about butane and which state is probably lowest. If we look at them, we can see that the two bulkiest groups are going to be the methyl groups. So the methyl groups being the bulkiest means that they're going to be, want to be the furthest away from each other. And they're the furthest away from each other in A. All right. So for this, we can draw A at some arbitrary point on our potential energy surface. Um, B, okay, so we have two states that are transition states. B has the methyl eclipsing a hydrogen here, so methyl eclipsing a hydrogen there. There's going to be some steric clashing there. There's going to be some steric clashing here and not really a lot of steric clashing there. That's going to be more of a loss of hyperconjugation. Um, 
but two unfavorable interactions along with being an eclipsing state. So that's going to be definitely higher energy than A. Let's go to C. C is going to have a steric clash between the two methyl groups. Now this is not going to be as extreme as an eclipse state, but you are going to have some clashing between the two methyl groups. So C is probably going to be higher than A, but not as high as B. And finally, D. Here we see in D that the two methyl groups, our bulkiest groups, are directly on top of each other. This is going to be a very strained state. Not good, right? So those two bulkiest groups on top of each other is going to be highly strained. So if we're going to rank these in order of energetics, A is going to be our lowest, C is going to be our second lowest, B will be our third, and D will be the highest energy state. When we draw this out, we see This is not to scale, by the way. Right, so this would be our potential energy surface if we were going from A to B to C to D and then back to C, we'll call that C prime. All right, so if we were to draw a line where A is our lowest energy, um, what we're going to see is that the energy barrier or rotation from A to C is 16 kilojoules per mole. From a to C, so the Gauss state versus the anti-state, we're going to see that the Gauss state, or C, is going to be about 3.8 kilojoules per mole higher than A, right? And that comes from this stair clashing here. And then when we get to D, again, D is where we have the most stair clashing and the most strain in our molecule, and this ends up being about 19 kilojoules per mole. And if we were to come back here, this would again be 3.8, because this is a degenerate state of C. All right, so in this case, the anti-state is more stable than the gauche state, and the highest energy barrier has the two bulkiest groups eclipsing each other. So that is the basics of conformational analysis. Uh, we'll get into what some of these energies mean in a supplemental video so that you can start to understand why this actually matters um, to, well, yeah, why it actually matters, and also how you use delta Gs in a way to help predict the conformations that are uh, most relevant when you're thinking about how a molecule looks or how it might sit when you're looking at reactivity. Uh, as a general rule, the lowest energy state is going to be the one that is the most prevalent. So in this case, most of the molecules at any given time are going to look like A, uh, with only a few looking like C. I think it's like a 70-30 ratio here, but we'll get into that. Um, all right, so that's confirmational analysis of alkanes. And if you have any questions, again, please come find me during office hours.